Today we're going to look at three alternatives to Michaelo Mudrick for Arsenal. Michaelo Mudrick joined Chelsea for a whopping 100 million euros with Arsenal pulling out of the deal because it was too expensive. I think great business for the Gunners who currently sit top of the Premier League. Although Arsenal are sitting top of the pile, I do think reinforcements are needed, especially on the left wing. I think one player that could play left wing striker would really complete Arsenal's squad and deal with the loss of Gabriel Jesus to injury. So today we're going to go through three alternatives, starting with the Premier League ready replacement, Leandro Trossard. Of course, Leandro Trossard has had a very, very good season for Brighton, especially the early parts of the season under Graham Potter. Uh, summarised by his hat-trick against Liverpool, his two assists and a goal against Manchester United and the 4-0 defeat at Old Trafford. Leandro Trossard this season has played two positions, really. He's played more of a striker as a false nine, for De Zerbi. but for Brighton he was used in a really interesting position as a left wing back but as an inverted left wing back where he'd hold the width and he'd cut in onto his stronger foot against United devastating those two assists four chances created three shots on goal scoring once uh, but tactically very interesting a similar role that he would probably play for Arsenal holding the width on the left hand side and allowing the likes of Granite Xhaka to move into that inside left position statistically this season has been the absolute best of Trossard's career in the Premier League. Uh, he's already scored seven goals and got two assists in just 16 games. He's only one goal away from matching his total for last season. But the issues with Trossard go a little bit deeper than just whether he's the right man for Arsenal because I think he'd be a perfect player for Arsenal. He's coming into his prime and could really inject some venom into the side uh, maybe when they're struggling to break down an opponent or even as a number nine if uh, Arteta wants to go with more of a false nine than Eddie Nketiah. So I think tactically it makes a lot of sense. Trossard either playing from the left wing, as we mentioned, receiving the ball wide and, and driving across or creating down on the byline like we've seen him for Brighton in that left wing back position. Or alternatively, you know, playing as that central striker with the likes of Martelli coming in, moving to the left wing and then Trossard playing as that kind of false nine centre forward. I think from a possession perspective, this would be a great answer to Arsenal's problems. And Ketty has been very good at dropping off the line, but it's a different kind of approach when you have a true false nine or a true deep line forward like Gabriel Jesus that can receive those passes into feet that really balances the side out, the layoffs, the combination play, the turns, the dribbles. Trossard will be perfect. But the issues here, Trossard's contract at Brighton is set to expire in June 2024. Brighton offered Trossard a new deal just before the World Cup. I think Brighton have done a lot for Trossard. They took the gamble of signing him from the Belgium League. They've grown him into a wonderful footballer. But at the same time, I think you need a little bit of connection with the football club. Um, his agents come out since the World Cup and said that they're not signing a new deal. And there was an altercation between Leandro and De Zerbi, which obviously is not good for the balance of a football club. Uh, the agent then came out and said the manager told Leandro to train separately. Last Monday, the man manager humiliated Leandro in the group and indicated he no longer wanted to see him. Him. The manager has not communicated directly with the player for four weeks. It's really incomprehensible. Incidentally, it's also a manager who indicated several times that a transfer is the most convenient solution. The big thing you'd say for Arsenal, what they've done so well recently, is get rid of the bad eggs in the squad. Abemiang was obviously the most recent one. Captain dropped, sold to Barcelona, and Arsenal looks so much better from that. So that would be the question marks on Trossard, and I'd probably say Arsenal not to sign Leandro Trossard for those reasons, that Arsenal have got a good, knit-tight group at the moment, and bringing someone in like a Trossard that has caused problems at Brighton could be the wrong option. Potentially would be available for a transfer with the right fee would be former Leeds United winger Rafinha. Rafinha's got quality to play both on the right-hand side and the left-hand side in the Premier League. A left-footed player, I think, you know, the more left-footed players you've got within your squad, the more advantage you have just because of the nature of more right-footed players and left-footed players, it's more an unknown. And especially with someone who's as creative as Rafinha, we all know his qualities in the Premier League was absolutely brilliant for Bielsa's leads, uh, really carried them in a creative and attacking sense uh, during his season under the Argentine tactician uh, and I think when you look at players uh, and signing them and profiles, you know, the big thing is, have they done it in the Premier League? Rafinha's definitely done that. His first season, uh, six goals and nine assists. Some brilliant performances um, during that season. But very much could play left, could play right. It's a game for uh, Leeds United where he was on the left wing. 
off the bench, you know, coming on and making an impact from that situation. Uh, but there's many other games where he's, you know, massively impacted the the kind of the turn of the tie uh, game against Brentford in the Premier League, playing more on the right hand side. Again, you can see the the heat map; it's perfect for Arsenal. Arsenal in from that wide right position, wide left position, they play with natural wingers. You know, they allow players to receive defeat to get on the ball. And those statistics from a creative centre absolutely fantastic in the Premier League. Five chances created in this match, nine crosses going into the box with four of those met. One big chance creating, of course, the assist um, against Brentford in a 3-4-3, showing the tactical uh, diversity of Leeds United and, of course, Rafinha. And that would be the one concern that you may have for looking at this transfer is I feel that Rafinha's got a lot more to his game when he plays on the right-hand side. It's harder to play against him, can cut in on that stronger left foot, can go on the outside, um, and really can be difficult. And actually, if you look at the Premier League statistics, he's only played five games from the left wing, and Arsenal probably need a left winger more than a right winger. Alternatively, though, you could potentially change things up with Arsenal. You know, you could be, you know, you'd have games where they can, you know, flip in game. We're talking Saka and Rafinha, you know, switching flanks at will, that's good. Uh, of course, Eric Ten Hag's Ajax team were really, really good when they had three left-footed players in their attacking midfield area and the, the fluidity and the roaming of, you know, those players absolutely fantastic and made them very difficult to break down. And you think in Arsenal sitting top of the league, teams are now going to respect them and how they play, so they're going to sit a lot deeper. So having that variation of having a Rafinha or a Saka to play left to right to change in game is fantastic. Rafinha also added goals to his game in his second season at Ellen Road, finished the season with 11 goals and three assists in 30 five games he's a player that's only come on to uh, the radar because of his lack of minutes at Barcelona which is a real concern for him so far this season he's only played 649 minutes uh, in La Liga he started only seven games two goals and two assists in La Liga this season isn't a bad return considering his minutes but the big concern for him and getting back into the side is Ansu Fati's uh, goals plus assists per 90 is currently at 0.92 whereas Rafinha's is just at a mere 0.55 hence why Xavi is probably going with Ansu Fati on the left wing and Ousmane Dembele on the right wing and I think that's the big uh, one of the bigger issues for Barcelona is that their recruitment, uh, you know, has, has arguably been pretty hit and miss um, with their signings and squad building. And Dembele is is better on the right hand side than the left hand side. That's usually where Rafinha does his best work. Um, so again, a slight concern for Arsenal if they were going to bring him in. That you know, in fact, he's he plays in Saka's position the best. But Arsenal were looking at him over the summer. Could the, a deal materialise? I think it would be a good good move for them. Premier League ready. But with Rafinha being 26 and Trossard being 28, two of the options we've looked at at the moment, let's bring in a younger player, Mike Tresor from Belgium. I think he could be a real top signing for Arsenal. He's a player that I, I really like. I've watched a, a lot of him over the last day or so, and I think he's got that quality to really change things for Arsenal. 23 years old, plays for Genk in the Belgium League. Uh, this season, five goals and 14 assists so far. Player that's a dead ball specialist and has an eye for a pass. In terms of looking at what he could bring to Arsenal, um, would kind of change the system for Arsenal. Um, he is an inside left player for me. Um, picks up that position, little pocket of space, creates from that area. Of course, Arsenal, when they're playing with a, with a Martinelli, usually have Martinelli in a wider position, Xhaka's inside, and then Zinchenko's kind of the support player, creating that triangle on the left-hand side for Arsenal. Why I like this transfer is it would change that for Arsenal, and Arsenal would have another way of breaking down an opponent. Uh, we're talking naturally, we'd probably see Kieran Tierney in the side. Granit Xhaka would probably retain that high position, um, or the low position. Trezor would come inside, um, and Tierney would provide a little bit more of an overlapping threat. So yeah, we'd see Granit Xhaka more in the build-up, uh, in a more of an 8 position than the 10 position that we see him at times. Alternatively, with, with Trezor, we see him get, him get him kind of deep on the ball at times, allowing Xhaka to make that alternate motion, to get his head up, and then play these kind of penetrative passes out to the wide players. So we're going to take a look at a few assists from this season, and here's the example of him picking up the ball deep and then looking for the alternate winger on the far side with a long pass. What I like about his, his kind of motion is he does kind of drop deep and get in, gets on the ball in these kind of deep areas areas where teams sit off him a little bit but he's got the technique and the ability to find that pass over the defense uh, with real quality his technique he's got like a kind of dip on it especially his set pieces are really really good from the left hand side and the right hand side wide free kicks 
and corners have kind of dipped when he strikes the ball and similar when he's long passing that similar motion let's look at another one of his assists this time driving across from the left wing cutting inside as a classic inverted winger would do and then feeding his teammate on the other side moving forward uh, again kind of a deeper area cross over the top for a number eight running in behind and this goes back to a kind of our point of uh, the, the tactical side of things is if Jack is in that high position, um, he's more than comfortable at getting on the ball in the deep area and looking for those passes over the top to maybe Odegaard running in or Saka making that move or even Nketiah in behind the defence. Again, good variation to his assists, uh, which are quite like giving Arsenal a little bit of something different in terms of creativity. So let's take a look at that creativity deep, this time playing a teammate through with a second assist pass for his teammate to get assist. He's got a really good relationship with a number of players that play for Genk. One of the most interesting ones is relationship with the, the youngster uh, Bilal El Carnusi, who starts in uh, kind of that central attacking midfield position, but he will drift to the left-hand side, allowing Tresor to take that number 10 area. And again, that's something that Arsenal don't really have is that fluidity in that forward line, really, with a 10 that can move out and then a, a sort of a left winger moving inside, hence giving Arsenal great balance in an attacking sense. One game that showcased Trey Saw's creativity was against Royal Antwerp in the Belgium League. Uh, provided three assists for his teammates. Uh, two from set pieces, one from open play showing that creativity. Out of his 14 assists in the Belgium League this season, uh, seven have come from open play and seven have come from dead ball situations. Again, showing that variation and quality in creating chances for his teammates. Overall for Arsenal, I think Trey Saw would give them great variation in an attacking sense. I'd say Trossard is probably the... You know, the, the bottom option for me out of the out of the three players, I think the attitude thing is the biggest thing that sways it for me. I like Rafinha. I think Rafinha can give Arsenal some kind of dynamic element in an attacking sense, especially kind of left wing, right wing with Saka moving to the other side. I think that will allow good unpredictability for Arsenal. But I think if you're looking at the squad and the young players in there right now, I would be signing young. Hence why I think Tresor is probably the best option. 23 years old, got good variation to his game, great eye for a pass and someone that Mikel Arteta can kind of mould into what player he wants. You know, the other two, 26, 28. Tresor, 23 years old, um, could really kind of evolve his game and you get a real star out there that would have some good impact off the bench for Arsenal. But guys, get into the comments below. Any other alternatives to Mudrick that you think Arsenal should buy? I've been Statman Dave. Check out SofaScore where we've done all of our analysis and looked at all of our heat maps in European football. Um, and we'll see you very, very soon.